In this lecture, we demonstrate how to determine the initial conditions and solve for the inductor current and capacitor voltage in a second order circuit that contains an inductor and capacitor connected in series. Well, here's a second order circuit with a 3 ohm resistor, a 2 Henry inductor, and a 1 farad capacitor all in series along with a 12 volt source that is switched out of the circuit at time t equals zero. Now we've labeled the voltage across the capacitor as VC and the current through the inductor as IL. It's important to note that the inductor current is also the current through the resistor and through the capacitor and understanding this is one of the keys to developing a solution for the voltages and currents throughout this circuit. Well the first thing we'll do for this circuit is determine the initial conditions and to do this we examine the circuit before the switch is moved. And because the circuit is driven by a DC source, we replace the capacitor with an open and we replace the inductor with a short. Now because the capacitor is open, no current flows in this circuit and accordingly the capacitor voltage at the time the switch is moved will be equal to the vo source voltage, 12 volts, and the inductor current will be equal to zero. Next, we'll take a look at the circuit after we move the switch. So at the time that we move the switch, we'll remove the 12 volt source from the circuit and just be left with the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor. Now by examining this circuit, we're going to be able to provide a second initial condition for the voltage across the capacitor. We do this by noting that the inductor current is also the current through the capacitor and then we use the physical relationship between the voltage across and the current through the capacitor to determine the initial condition for the capacitor voltage. Now the current through a capacitor is the capacitance times the derivative of the voltage across it. So the derivative of the voltage across this capacitor at time t equals zero is the reciprocal of the capacitance times the current through it at time t equals zero, which is the current through the inductor at t equals zero. Now because the inductor current is zero just before and after the switch is moved, and because that is the current through the capacitor, we can conclude that the derivative of the capacitor voltage at time t equals zero, or the time the switch is moved, is also equal to zero, and that'll have units of volts per second. Now that we've determined the initial conditions for the capacitor voltage, we can use Kirchhoff's voltage law to write a differential equation for this circuit. Now to do this, we'll start with the resistor. The voltage across the resistor is the resistance times the current through the resistor. The voltage, that's this term, the voltage across the inductor is the inductance times the derivative of the current. Now the voltage across the capacitor is the integral of the current. However, we're going to leave it as the capacitor voltage and then convert and rewrite the inductor current in terms of this capacitor voltage. Well, to do this, we'll again note that the current through the inductor also flows through the capacitor. And we'll use the physical relationship for the voltage across and current through a capacitor. This allows us to express the current as the, the capacitance times the derivative of the capacitor voltage and then by differentiating that relationship we can express the derivative of the current as the capacitance times the second derivative of the capacitor voltage. And then by making this substitution we can write a second order differential equation in terms of the capacitor voltage. So we replace the inductor current with the capacitance which is 1 times the derivative of the capacitor voltage. We replace the derivative of the inductor current with the capacitance times the second derivative of the capacitor voltage. And we'll leave the capacitor voltage unchanged here. Now we could have instead manipulated our original equation into a second order differential equation in terms of the inductor current, but it's often a little simpler when the inductor and capacitor are in series particularly in terms of specifying these initial conditions to first solve for the capacitor voltage and then use that to solve for any other voltage or current in the circuit. Well if we look at this second order differential equation 
we have a constant driving function which happens to be 0. And then we can look at this equation, write its characteristic equation to determine the transient response of this circuit. So the second derivative has a coefficient of 2, the first derivative has a coefficient of 3, and the function itself has a coefficient of 1. So this is our characteristic equation and we need to find the roots of this equation and I've shown how we might use the quadratic formula to determine that these roots are negative 1 and negative 1 half. So then the general solution for the capacitor voltage is Vc is k1 some constant times e to the negative t it's one of our roots and k2 times e to the negative one-half t that's the other root. Now note that because the constant in the differential equation for the capacitor voltage is zero the final value for this voltage will be zero and we don't have another constant term in our expression for the capacitor voltage. Now to solve for the unknown constants k1 and k2 we need to determine the derivative of this voltage. So if we differentiate the voltage we'll get negative k1 e to the negative t and then minus one half k2 e to the negative one half t. Now we can evaluate both of those when t is equal to zero so Vc when t is equal to zero will be k1 e to the zero so that's k1 plus k2 e to the zero and the derivative of the voltage when t is equal to zero will be negative k1 minus one half k2. Now our original initial conditions for this circuit we said that Vc the voltage cross capacitor at t equals zero was equal to 12 and we determined that the derivative of the voltage across the capacitor when t is equal to zero was zero. So now these two equations give us two equations in the two unknowns k1 and k2. From those we can solve for k1 and k2 and determine that k1 is equal to negative 12 and k2 is equal to 24. We can substitute that back into our expression for the capacitor voltage and we'll find that that voltage then is negative 12 e to the negative t plus 24 e to the negative 1 half t. Now finally if we want the inductor current we can note that the current through the capacitor is the same as the current through the inductor and then we have this physical relationship that relates the current through a capacitor to the voltage across a capacitor that's the capacitance times the derivative of its voltage so if we differentiate this voltage we'll get a negative one times a negative one that'll be 12 e to the negative t and then a negative one half times 24 so that'll be a negative 12 e to the negative one half t we have to multiply that then by the capacitance but the capacitance is one farad so our voltage would be this expression and our current would be this expression the unit for the voltage would be volts and this would be valid for t greater than zero and the units for the inductor current would be amps and this again would be valued for t greater than zero. And as a final note, the resistor voltage, if we were if we were interested in that, could be obtained by taking this current and multiplying it by three. If we wanted to know the voltage across the inductor, then we could use the relationship for the voltage across an inductor, which is the inductance times the derivative of the current. So we could differentiate this current and then multiply it by the inductance, which is two.